Hello, and welcome to what should be the last part of this Dark Souls playthrough, provided everything goes well. I shouldn't have too much of a problem with the two bosses that I have left to do, but... Uh, no, you know what, this, this will be the last part, because I am just going to make this the last part, regardless of how many attempts it takes me to kill these bosses. So this might be a really long path, it might actually be really short because I might kill both of these bosses first time. But basically, what you want to do is you want to come down here from the Analondo bonfire. And you want to come up to this moving platform. Because when you get to Analondo, this platform is higher up. And you have to go through that building, and then you come across to that ledge, and you can get onto this platform and you can lower it down to this level. It actually has three levels that it goes to. This is the medium, or the middle. This is the middle level it goes to. What you want to do is you want to come up to here and you want to give this a push. Because this will make it go down even lower. And then you want to go down these stairs to go down to the absolute lowest point you can get to. Because here, you're going to find Dark Moon Tomb. Now this is supposedly Lord Gwyn's tomb, although we will find out later on that he is not actually buried here. This is just a fake tomb, because they didn't tell the people that, um, that Gwyn is not actually dead. But um, there was a statue there, and that's disappeared, and that's because I was wearing the Dark Moon Seance Ring. Now you get the Dark Moon Seance Ring from the Catacombs, I showed you where to get it in that episode. And basically, if you wear it, that... that um, can't even speak properly. If you wear it, then that statue disappears. Now what I'm going to want to do here, is I'm going to want to light this bonfire. Then I'm going to want to walk to Firelink Shrine. Because there's a bit of a bug, I don't know if it's a bug actually, or it was an intended feature, but there's uh, an issue with this boss fight, and that is that um, when you die, you don't actually respawn at the Dark Moon Tomb bonfire, even if you rested there. You go to the bonfire that you rest of that before that. Now, for me, that would have been Anor Londo then, but uh, that just makes it really annoying to get back here if I die. So what I do is I just walk to Firelink Shrine and then don't rest here. Although I think even if I rested here, I'd still go back to Firelink. But if I die during this boss fight now, I will go back to Firelink Shrine and I will be able to come back here really quickly. This is the tomb of the great Lord Gwyn. Tarnished it shall not be by the feet of men. If thou art a true disciple of the dark sun, cast aside thine eye. Hear the voice of mine self, Windelin, and kneel before me. Now I can kneel here, in this, this spot here, and become a servant of the Dark Moon Covenant. And what you do in that covenant is you kill people who've got sin level, and you get sin level by doing invasions I believe so you can punish people who get invasions but I'm not going to kneel I'm actually going to completely ignore him and I'm going to trespass in the tomb and he's going to get annoyed at me. I should point out as well I've got the crest shield out here because the crest shield has really good uh, magic defense as shown there it's 80% magic defense and this guy's attacks predominantly magic based so it's going to be really useful for this boss fight. What foolishness Why trespasseth upon the great lord's tomb, whilst thou art a disciple of the dark sun? Mark the words of mine self, Gwyndolin. Thou shalt not go unpunished. So here we go. Let's fight dark sun Gwyndolin. So basically, that is Gwyndolin, and he is going to teleport back throughout this boss, this boss fight. And, uh, right, when he does this, you want to hide behind a pillar. Because they don't go through pillars. Uh, when he fires his arrow things, you want to run side to side like this. Right, hide behind a pillar. Oh, that one goes through pillars, so you want to watch out for that one. That will just go through, like, any everything. Uh, right, you can get, like, a hit on as he's teleporting away. And basically, yeah... He'll just keep going back, and you just want to keep running forward and catching up to him. 
So just zigzag when he does this arrow attack. Two hands so I can get some decent hits in. There we go. Right, below half health already. Just take a heal. Right, dodge out the way of that. And again. And again. And again. Really? Oh, right. Hide behind a pillar. Oh, God. Oh, God. I narrowly avoided that. I didn't avoid that. Too well, I'm not too handing it, but oh, well. I might actually be able to kill him here. Oh, yeah. There we go. Really quick. There we go. I killed Dark Sun Gwindle in first attempt. That's alright. This is definitely going to be the final part then, because uh, I'm going to cruise through the remainder of this game now. Now basically that hallway is not actually infinite. It creates an illusion of like being an infinite hallway as you chase down and it keeps getting further and further away, but that hallway is technically not infinite because whilst I've never done it myself, I've seen a video, and if you chase him down for like five minutes, eventually he will reach the end and you can just circle around and kill him really easily. But to be honest, as I've just demonstrated there, you can kill him fairly easily anyway. And yeah, that was a that was a male, by the way. Gwendolyn is a male. He was raised as a female because of his affinity with the moon. But yeah, in here you can get Sunlight Blade, you can get the armour of the Dark Moon Nightess, who we will meet in a minute. And this chest is empty. I'm not sure what the meaning of that is. But yeah, this is supposed to be Lord Gwyn's tomb, although he's not here, because we will actually see where he is. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna go to home. I'm gonna home with Bone here because um, I can't be bothered running back down that corridor, and I'm not gonna need them ever again. Swap back to my Silver Knight shields. Uh, yeah, those rings are fine. And now I'm gonna walk to the chamber of the princess. Because there are two ways you can activate the Gwyndolin fight. You can do it by getting the Dark Moon Seance Ring, and then you that statue disappears and you can access it. Or that statue disappears as well if you do something else, and that something else is you kill Guinevere. Now Guinevere is not actually here. This is actually an illusion. Which explains why, if you hit her once with anything, she disappears. And then a cutscene plays. Now, if I hadn't killed Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn would now be chastising me for killing Guinevere. Hence why you get sort of a weird camera angle that doesn't really show anything. It's because there's usually speech going on. But killing Guinevere triggers the illusion of Anolondo to to stop. Because basically Anna Londo was not a happy cheery pl well, it wasn't exactly a happy cheery place anyway but it wasn't all bright and lovely because um, actually the fire's dying out and the world's coming to an end and as such it's really dark and gloomy and when you destroy the illusion everything does match that and goes dark and gloomy. Now I will point something else out basically the way invasions work is if every area is tied to a boss, and if you defeat the boss of that area, you no longer can get invaded. Now the boss of Anor Londo is Ornstein and Smo, so if you kill them you can't get invaded in Anor Londo. But if you trigger Dark Anor Londo to, to start, you kill Guinevere and you trigger Dark Anor Londo, that counts as a new area, and there is a new area boss, which is Gwendolyn. But if you kill Gwendolyn and then trigger Dark Anor Londo, it goes a bit weird, and you can just permanently get invaded in Dark Anor Londo then. Now, I'm not human, so I'm not going to get invaded now, but it's just something to be wary of that you can be permanently invaded. Now, pretty much all the enemies also disappear in uh, Dark Anor Londo, but these guys are still here, and these are members of the Dark Moon Covenant. These are followers of Gwyndolin, and they will attack me because I killed Guinevere. And I'm failing to parry these. There we go. And one dead. Just got this guy to go. I'm actually just going to heal. Just in case. Oh, I got that wrong, didn't I? And again. And again. Right, I'm going to have to back up here and heal again. 
Luckily, he's pretty slow. Because he's in his full, like, iron set. Right, come on. Attack me, mate. There we go. And you're now dead. Easy peasy. Now there is actually one more of these who will attack me. One more follower of the Dark Moon who will attack me. And that is the uh, Firekeeper of Anolondo. Uh, the Dark Moon Knightess, or Gwyndolin's Knightess. Basically, she will be waiting out here. Now, I never actually showed this off, apparently. I thought I had, but I never showed it off. There is a lever over here, and if you push this lever, it actually opens the doors to here. So you can actually just come out into Analondo. And I just love... I mean, I love the design of Analondo, and I love how it looks in the day, but I also love how eerie it just seems at night, especially now that it's, like, all so empty because all the enemies have disappeared. But down here, yes, you will find this woman... Who is the fire keeper? So that fire um, will still be lit for the moment, but if I kill her now, so the fire will stop being lit. Come on, attack How me. You no, you don't buff. Sorry, you want to buff your weapons, then you're just going to get killed. There we go, and she will drop a fire keeper soul, but that now, that now means that that Anor Londo bonfire. That was completely accidental use of humanity there. But that now means that that Anor Londo bonfire will now be out. I can still warp to it, but it will just not be lit anymore, so I can't rest at it and I can't warp from it because of that. But, uh, yeah. That's it. I have done pretty much everything there is to do in this game. There's, there'll be items I've missed and a few little secret areas, but I've defeated all the bosses. I've been to all the areas. So now I want to go back to Firelink Shrine. And I also want to come down here. Because I've got a Firekeeper's soul, so I might as well make the most of it and uh, reinforce my Estus Flask so I have a plus four that is really not going to be necessary. And I'll just uh, rest here. And I will also demonstrate that to get to the Firelink Altar, which is where I want to go now, you can have Framp to take you. I think you can warp there as well. Or you can just jump down this hole. Because if you jump down the hole, you don't actually die because some mysterious force actually um, saves you from dying. There we go. Some mysterious force just catches you and saves you. So there we go. We're now in Firelink Altar. We have all the Lord's souls. Let's offer the souls to the Lord Vessel. And there we go. The Lord Vessel has been uh, satiated, to believe the terms that they refer to. And now this will disappear. Or the doors will open, rather. Um, oh God, sorry. Um, the doors will open, and that will give us access to the final area of the game. And that area is the kiln of the first flame. Now I'm not sure what that's about, because that always appears. And it's just sort of a phantom of Black Knight, and I'm not sure what it's about because it just walks across. And there's more of them. Yeah, I'm not sure why they have all these phantoms of the Black Knights. But, uh, yeah, here we are. We're in the Kiln of the First Flame. And there are actually five more enemies standing between us and, and uh, the final boss fight with Lord Gwyn. And those five enemies are these Black Knights. There is a Black Knight of every type. There is a, an Axe one, a Sword one. Uh, there's a Great Sword one, an Axe one a halberd one, and there are two sword ones. And these respawn. Unlike all the other Black Knights in the game, these ones respawn. And basically, I think they're just here so that you can guarantee to get their drops. So you can guarantee to get a Black Knight halberd, you can get a Black Knight shield, you can get a Black Knight sword, great sword, axe. And you can also grind Titanite off them, because these will drop Titanite as well. Allowing you to make sure that you can fully upgrade all your stuff 
before you get to uh, the final. See that one drops a red Titanite chunk. The first one dropped a normal Titanite chunk. You want to just keep progressing. Um, this one's the most annoying one. I can't remember what type of great of uh, Black Knight he is. Uh, he's a sword one. The best way to deal with this one is to parry. If I get it right, there we go. Because it's on a really narrow ledge and you don't want to uh, fall off, so it's easiest to just parry him. And there we go. Right. What's this one drop? Another Titanite chunk. Run across here. There's only two left now. This will almost certainly be the only time I come through here because I'd be very disappointed if I don't beat Lord Gwyn on my first attempt because he's not a difficult boss. But here's the axe one. Let's get him to come to me. There we go. Backstab him. Wait for him to get up. Parry. Repose. He drops white Titanite chunk. I got his axe as well. And then we have this final one, which is the halberd. And, uh, oh god, I didn't actually get the backstab off there. I'll just parry him. And there we go. I'm just going to top my health up because I'd like to go into this boss fight with full health because I can. And here we go. The final boss fight will begin with my favourite piece of music in the game. So here we go. Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. Oh, I didn't get it quite right. I don't get to be an ultimate badass. Oh, god damn it, I completely fucked that up. That was the wrong attack to try and parry. Because you can't parry that one. Oh god, don't embarrass me and actually kill me now that I've said this is going to be really easy. Right, come on. Right, there we go. Parry and repost. And then take a swig. And then parry and repost. Then take a swig. Oh. And then parry and then repost. This is really the final boss. I am not joking. This is really how easy this boss fight becomes. Parry and repost. And then, for good measure, one last one. Oh god. Parry and repost. And there we go. Final boss beaten. If you can parry and repost, that is the easiest boss in the game. That I, I think that is easier than pinwheel, if you can parry and repost. Because by the time you actually get here, you'll be so ridiculously overpowered that it becomes so easy. But there we go. I've beaten the game. I now have two choices. Uh, I mean, most people don't think there's two choices because most people just see, oh, bonfire, I'll immediately go and light that. But my two choices are, I can light the bonfire, or I can leave. Now, each of those leads to a different ending. I'm going to go with the one that most people will initially go with, which is lighting the bonfire. If you want to see what happens there, if you leave, I will go play the game yourself. I'm sure you'll probably really enjoy it, and then just walk out and see what happens. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the fire. I'm going to postpone the uh, death of the flame and I'm going to re like, sort of re-kickstart the Age of Light by casting myself into the first flame.
there we have it. That is the end of Dark Souls. That is all the bosses beaten. And that is the end. Uh, a pretty sad ending, but that pretty much goes along with just the entire feeling of the game. Of this is an aging world that's dying and there's not really much can be done for it. And it just feels a bit futile that you did actually just sort of kindle the fire because eventually the fire is just going to start dying out again and the cycle will continue and it will depend on whether another chosen undead will show up and postpone the beginning of the dark. But there we go. That, um... I was unsure um, until recently but since I've played it again recently and I've played through this and I've been doing it in my own time as well just playing through with different characters I have come to the conclusion that this is indeed my my favourite game of all time and um, I absolutely love it and I don't think I will ever get tired of coming back and playing through this game yes there are some moments of frustration and yes the mechanics are brilliant but um I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Dark Souls 2 next, and in that you will see, I'll explain and show how the mechanics were definitely improved in Dark Souls 2, and everything was just more polished. Uh, the issue is, uh, for lack of a better term, I don't think Dark Souls 2 had as much of a soul as Dark Souls 1, I just don't think the story engrossed me. I don't think the land and the characters engrossed me as much as the the ones in Dark Souls 1. Uh, but maybe, maybe that um, there is the DLC coming out. Um, I am recording this on July 21st. Um, the DLC is due out tomorrow, the first part anyway, for Dark Souls 2. So maybe, just maybe that will significantly improve it and it will add a lot of backstory because to be honest I think this game I think Dark Souls 1 without the DLC is probably about 95 out of 100 I think with the DLC and those bits included and the extra backstory that you get from the DLC I think that takes it up to about a 98 I think this is um, I think Dark Souls in my opinion is about as close as you are ever going to get to making the perfect game. I think if you had the mechanics of Dark Souls 2 and you implemented them in, in the world and story of Dark Souls 1, I think it would probably improve it, but then again, I don't know, because a lot of Dark Souls' charm is that it doesn't work perfectly and that it does have sort of it does have issues, but it's just a brilliant game. And I implore you to, if you haven't, uh, to go out and purchase this and play it. If, um, if you have a PC, if you have a decent gaming PC, uh, go out, wait for the Steam sales because, um, I mean, I realise you've just missed one now, but seriously, you can get this game so ridiculously cheap on PC. Just download DS Fix, make sure you do that, because uh, the game is practically unplayable without it. And have some fun. I mean, there's always the chance that this game isn't for you. But I suggest you go out and play it. Goodbye.